In this video, I'll explore a different technique for machining the scallops that are on the top of these round parts. To begin, I'll show you what's already been done in this file. I'm in the geometry view, and you see the MCS that's just here at the top center of the part. Next, there are two designations in the workpiece. Under specify part, I just selected the part itself. And then under specify blank, I used bounding cylinder to create stock around the existing uh, cylindrical shape. There's also two tools that are already created, a 10 millimeter roughing tool and eight millimeter finishing tool. Let's go to the operations now. And the operation I want to use in mill planer is the floor wall with IPW. We'll choose the roughing end mill, our workpiece, and we won't select the method. Now for this operation type, I don't need to specify a floor, so I won't. I'll uncheck the box here for automatic walls, and I want to specify those manually. I'll select the button, and I could certainly move in here and pick all these individually, uh, but to save some time, I'm gonna hit F8 to create an orthogonal orientation on the screen, and then I'm gonna draw a fence. It looks like I picked up a few extra faces. I will hold the shift key and deselect the three faces that I don't want. Okay, that's the group of faces I'm after, so I click OK. And now what you see on the screen with the hourglass is it's trying to recompute what the active a floor would be. Remember, we didn't specify a floor. So what it's done is there's this conical surface down here and it's found the lowest point of any of those surfaces and that's where it currently has the floor. Well, obviously, you know, that's not going to really work for us. We want to dip down a little bit lower than that and that's what this z-depth offset is for. So watch what happens if I type in, uh, this is metric again, half a millimeter. And if you look closely, you'll see when it recomputes that that green preview face has now dropped down, indicating that it's going to machine a little bit deeper. The next thing I need to do is change to profile from the zig pattern. So I, I just want to kind of spin around this thing. Now, I'm going to uh, hit generate at this point. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I need to specify a tool axis, and that's going to be our ZM axis. I'm going to hit generate and make a mistake. and uh, I want to make this mistake because it's very common with this command and I want to show you what the evidence is and then how to fix it. Okay, there's my toolpath. However, uh, quite clearly it's not getting all the way around those tips. In fact, it really seems like the tool is coming out until it hits the periphery of the stock and then it's uh, picking up and then setting down again. Let's look at why it's doing that and how to fix it. I'm going to go into cutting parameters, containment, and then here at tool overhang, you'll see what's going on. As soon as the tool overhang is 50% or less, it stops cutting. That can be useful if you're trying to minimize motion while you're roughing something out, but in our case, that's just not really what we want. So all I need to do is change this to 100. Now, I'm, I could generate right now, but uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go back into the non-cutting moves because uh, it's got a linear engage. You can see these linear engages here. I'd rather have a arc engage and, and retract. All right, now let's regenerate with those two changes made. Okay, that's looking much better, but it's really not a roughing pass. Let's go back into cutting parameters one more time. Go to stock, and we want to change the wall stock, and I'm going to add 0.3 millimeters. We'll regenerate one more time, and this should be, this should complete this path, this uh, roughing path. Okay, I saw that pop out a little bit. So now to get to the finish path, we'll just copy and then paste inside to attach this new operation, our finish. Just 
a little housekeeping there, to the finish end mill. But remember, we still have that stock offset in there. So I'll go into cutting parameters, stock, and change that back to zero. Okay, recall what this looked like before. We were seeing the dim cylinder of the initial stock, but now we're on the second operation. So what we're presented with is the result of the first operation. So that's what you're seeing is this is what it would look like after the roughing pass. So that's what our finish operation is starting with. And if we look really carefully, there's our green face in there. That's our preview face. It's indicating that that's what it sees, that it can machine with the current settings and the current tool. Okay, let's generate. And if we wanted to, one more thing we could do is turn on comp for, our, uh, for this finish pass. I'll go to more. And I'll just keep the default settings here. And to check the comp, we see the zero here for a G41 and the X for a G40. So that looks correct. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Here's my program with these two operations. Let's do a verify. It's going a little fast, but I'm stopped here in the middle of the finish. So you can see, in fact, the roughing pass is leaving some stock, and my finish pass is getting right back to zero again. Okay, so there's another technique then for machining those scallops.